Focus. Focus up. Talking to you, Mike, out in the state of Washington. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 10. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal show for you. An outstanding guest. Of course, we've got the great Monahan as well. Today's show, we are going to cover accents, home, watches, setbacks, swimming, and your mindset. All of that and much, much more on today's episode of The Rubio Method. Big T, let it rain. Focus. Focus up. I'm talking to you, Gunner. What's going on, my man? All right. Welcome back. You guys have done a fantastic job of sharing every episode. We've had nine already. This is number 10, like I said, on NGBN.TV, YouTube, Spotify, Google, and Amazon podcast. Keep it up. Keep subscribing. Keep spreading the word. Monahan, number one, congratulations to you and your wife. Now you have a one-month-old. Congratulations. And let's get to the minute with Monahan. Yeah, so Rubio, thank you so much. Uh, first month has gone by so quick. I can't imagine about all the other months. So this is going to be sweet. Um, today, I wanted to talk about the uh, suicide prevention hotline. Guys, um, if you or someone you know is in crisis, hey, call it 1-800-273-8255. I just want to walk you through what it's going to be like. You're going to hear some music. Someone's not going to answer the phone right away. That is okay. You're not in the wrong spot. They're just connecting you with a local person. And then you'll talk to somebody. The good thing is it's 24-7, even on holidays, and you have complete confidentiality. The other thing is you can talk to somebody about a friend or family member that's going through crisis. It doesn't have to be them that calls. That is my Monaghan Minute. Just so you know, the suicide hotline is here for you 24-7, and it's completely confidential. Monahan, on that suicide hotline, since we're talking about the mental health of everyone, do you have to be basically at that point or do, can you call preemptive? That is a great question, Rubio. Oh, you know, you don't have to be a complete uh, crisis where you may be ready to do something that you might regret. Um, you can be, you know, just going through it, needing someone to talk to. Uh, they are completely open to whatever you need and whoever needs help. So you don't have to be completely on the edge. Just call if you're feeling feeling funky. Fantastic. And I'm sure we will have that number on the screen for you guys as well. Monahan, let's get to some email questions, if you will. Yes. First things first, Rubio, you talk about accents a lot. What is your favorite accent? This is from William in Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, William. You know, number one, I absolutely love accents. I, I'm a big fan of them. I wish I had one. I do not. It kind of upsets me. I love from Boston all the way around. There's a couple accents I really can't even understand. Like anyone from London, I won't watch TV shows or movies because I, I literally just can't understand it. And I'm not, I, I don't want to be that old yet where I watch shows with subtitles. So I refuse to do that. My number one accent I would have to say is probably like a deep, deep South accent. There was one time when I was running a camp in Louisiana, and this was right when I was just starting to get into the whole camp thing. And this kid comes up, we're doing check in, and I'm saying his name. Okay, checking in. What's your name? He goes wrong. I go, what? He goes wrong. I, I I can't understand you, man. He goes wrong. And then I go still I still got nothing. Spell it out for me, man. He goes wrong. R O N or wrong. And I go. What the hell? So I'm, I'm starting to look around like people are, I'm getting punked right now. And so I said, I need you to write it down. So he writes it down and I said, are you trying to say Ronald? He goes, wrong. And I go, oh my God, that is the best. Fantastic accent. I wish I would have videotaped him. So William, I would say the deep, deep, deep South. Those are my favorite. That is an amazing story. I love that. Our next <laughs> question comes from Alyssa from Michigan, Nick and Rubio. Both seem to have traveled a good deal. In your opinion, what is your ideal place to live? I'll answer this first. I love the cold. I'm actually in the mountains of Colorado right now, and it's a pleasant 60 degrees. I love it. But my favorite place to travel is probably Minnesota or Canada. I freaking love it up there. Um, I've been to Banff National Park, and it is amazing. In September, it's about 50 degrees. It's the best. Theo, what are you? 
Okay, Monahan, we've established that you're part polar bear. Um, I, as much as I love the southern accents, I would say my ideal place would probably be not in the south. I, I swear to you, I think, and all my friends and family will tell you, I think I'm the first ever case of a human being being allergic to humidity. I can't stand it. I don't like it. I know for a fact I'm allergic. No one can tell me I'm not. I, I just I can't deal with it. My body doesn't associate with it. So I would have to say probably the Northwest, Seattle, Oregon, probably a little too rainy. Montana's a little too cold. So probably it'd have to be uh, Idaho, right, where I live right now. Well, that's, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Love it. Last question. Okay, Monahan and Rubio. I read a quote from Thomas Sowell uh, and wondered your thoughts. There has now been created a world in which the success of others is grievance rather than example. I'm going to take that first because I completely agree. I think that we look at each other's social media, we look at other people's Twitter and Instagram, and we get this FOMO and we like start to get upset because we don't have the success that they have. And I think it's just been, you know, a comparison is the thief of joy. And I think it's just absolutely heartbreaking that that's, that's the way success has been viewed these days. I would agree. Uh, Thomas Sowell is a phenomenal human being. Very, very smart. If you've ever read any of his books, they're fantastic. I would agree with you, Monahan. I, I think one of the biggest downfalls of society is when people try to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. I think you're just you're, you're taking away your own to try to grab someone else's. And your quote was absolutely fantastic. Those were great, great email questions. Like I said, you can always email Rubio at the Rubio method dot com. You can hear us on Spotify, Google, Amazon, YouTube and of course, NGBN dot TV, big T, let it rain. Hey, Chris, and hello to all the Rubio Method listeners and viewers. Welcome to NGBN.TV. My name is Charles Wallace, host of the Bear Essentials. What can I say? My kids call me Bear. This was just me three short years ago, 260 plus pounds. As you can see, I've made progress, but like all of you, I am still a work in progress. How about we continue that progress together? Join me as I look to speak with guests who have an expertise in areas of fitness, mindset, mental health, and other topics or issues that impact older guys like me. Hell, sometimes our guests just have amazing, inspirational stories that you won't want to miss. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday on YouTube or Spotify. Actually, you can find the Bear Essentials on most major podcast platforms. Better yet, how about you join us on NGBN.TV? You'll find me there. Listen, here at the Bear Essentials, our motto is never hibernate on your goals. We're looking to build a community. It's actually more like a club. So when you're ready, come take the ride. See you soon. Focus. Focus up. Leslie, I'm talking to you in Southern California. What's going on? Thanks for watching the show. Remember, you can watch us on Spotify, YouTube, NGBN.TV, and Google and Amazon Podcasts. Here we go. We've got a fantastic guest. I've known this guest. I was actually just looking at it. And I think about thir you know, longer than that, about 15 years, Bill Geyser, mm -hmm. a legend in the tech world. He's actually the one who got me going on social media. For those that love me on social media, you can... Thank him. For those of you who hate me on social media, you can blame him. Bill Geyser, thanks for coming out. We really appreciate you opening up some time on this afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. It's a pleasure being here. All right. So who is Bill Geyser? Bill Geyser is a proven leader and business builder with over 20 years experience in wearable technology. He's founded two businesses, acquired publicly traded companies managed wearable and connected device programs for some of the world's leading brands, resulting in the launch and commercialization of more than 75 products. And he's a four-year scholarship swimmer at Indiana State University. Bill, I've got three quick hitter questions. Number one, who is the best overall athlete in the history of sports? You know, i got to go with... <laughs> Michael Phelps. I mean, hey. I have a feeling, I have a feeling you go that way. You know, I, what the guy did is is amazing. His his consistency over time in a sport that is really hard to stay good at. 
It's one thing to get good swimming, but to maintain that leadership over decades, he's phenomenal. He's got my vote. I loved watching him swim just because not only was he just dominant, but I also loved every time they showed him race or talked about him racing, they always showed what he was eating, like the amount of calories. And I was just blown away that this dude was throwing down, it was like 10,000 or 20, some ridiculous amount of calories. And I was like, He's, damn, I wish I could do that. That'd be phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you think about it, the guy races events from a hundred meters to 400 meters in length. But probably during his hard training phase, he's swimming 80,000, maybe 100,000 meters every week for a 200 IM. So the amount of work they do is crazy. You need calories oh my God. to do that. Okay. You, you recently, or not too recently, moved to Florida. What's the best part about Florida? Wow, there's so many good things. I'm gonna. I know you guys are not fans of the humid, warm air. I actually like it. You know, it keeps your joints loosened up. You know, all those aches and pains tend to go away. I'm close to the ocean. I love open water swimming. It's a great lifestyle. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you have that for right now. Last question, this quick hitter, hot dog or hamburger, Bill? You broke up one more time. Hot, which, what do you choose, hot dog or hamburger? Hey, I was born and raised in Chicago. I got to I, I gotta go with a hot dog. There it is. I knew I liked you, Bill. I knew I liked you. <laughs> I was going to say, you got my hand's heart now. All right, so, Bill, in 2011, you started working with MetaWatch, and it was flat out groundbreaking. I'm a kind of a tech nerd. I like to look at all this stuff. And I was remember looking at it and just going, oh my gosh, this thing is flat out amazing. It was basically a watch way back in 2011. It could give you messages. It, had, it was basically the computer on your wrist, but it was cool looking and all that good stuff. A couple of years later, I think around 2014, 2015, right when MetaWatch is starting to get its rhythm, a tiny company called Apple comes out with basically the same thing. And MetaWatch kind of went by the wayside. Not to dig up bad feelings, but how the hell did you get through that time of your life? So um, actually the journey in smartwatches for me began really in the late 90s when I first started developing what I'll call tech-based watches, initially for swimmers and triathletes, and then that morphed over time into running fossils, uh, wearable uh, technology watch division, uh, and then spinning that group out, forming MetaWatch. The, the hypothesis, the strategy behind MetaWatch assumed uh, Apple was going to come into the business. You know, when... We first started launching watches connected to phones using Bluetooth as the wireless conduit. It became real clear to me that the experience of initially engaging with your phone through a watch was a pretty cool experience. And I didn't foresee any situation in which Apple would allow others to engage with an iPhone unless it was with an Apple Watch. So the strategy from day one presumed Apple would come in, but it would spawn off a whole bunch of smaller size markets. A, a good analogy, in fact, we used to call it this. It was the pilot fish analogy. Think of a shark and think of those pictures of a shark and it got those little fish swimming alongside of it who live off the crumbs. Well, that was gonna be our strategy. What you don't wanna do as a pilot fish is go after the shark's lunch because then you become the shark's lunch. Unfortunately for us, those crumbs didn't develop fast enough. When Apple entered the investors in that category, wearable computing, 
were fearful, and, and I understand the logic behind it, they were fearful that there'd be nothing left in the market after Apple gobbled up their share. And it was very, very hard to get retail distribution because the retailers were fearful that everybody would buy an Apple Watch and nothing else. So that's why we suffered the fate we did. Um, you know, in fact, I look back and it was the right strategy. Our timing was wrong. Uh, but it's like anything else in life. You know, you, uh, you, you have a hypothesis. You execute on it. If it doesn't go the way uh, you wanted, you pivot or you pick yourself up and do something else. So it was, you know, startups are a risky business. So everyone that went into it knew up front it was going to be a risky venture. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. Okay. I love your attitude. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk and branch off of this question was you're, you're, this show is obviously about mental health. That could have been a moment in your life where it could have been like, oh my God, this is, this is it. This is done. I, I've been working on this since, like you said, the nineties. And now the, the, the shark comes in and boom, just does everything. How, how were you, how did you maintain your strength mentally for all the men out there? How, how did you do that? Well, you know, I had confidence that the category of smartwatches, wearable computing, whatever you want to call it, um, was going to be viable. And, and there was some historical precedent for that. If you go back in time and think about the computer industry before the IBM PC. Now, you two youngsters don't remember this, but I was around for that time. And here's what happened. Before IBM launched the PC, they were the world's biggest computer company selling mainframe computers, big, 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 massively expensive uh, computers that supported thousands of users. Well, all of along come these little startups in the late 70s, early 80s that create these small personal computers. And the prevailing attitude was their toys. They'll never make it. Nobody will ever buy a personal computer for anything other than a gimmick. Well, look what happened. IBM came in and it validated the category and it drove 40 years, four decades of phenomenal growth. That's what I expected with the Apple Watch. So I looked at it almost like a baseball game. We entered in the first inning and we got struck out in the first inning but there were many more innings left to play in this thing. So I was confident more opportunities would follow. And the, the things, the key learnings that I had accumulated from being in that world for so long would serve me well. And it has. I love that. It's a very phenomenal answer. I mean, I think it's gonna help out a lot of men, especially with the mental health aspect, like the show's trying to push. You are obviously in phenomenal shape. I know you are doing a lot of swimming. How does swimming help you in and out of the water? Boy, there's lots of different things there. First of all, you know, for people who have run their entire life, sooner or later, unless you're, you know, kind of a genetic freak, things break down. Your feet give out. Your knees give out your back gives out. Swimming is one of those unique sports in which your body weight is supported by the water. So it's really ex excellent in terms of aerobic uh, development and it builds a hell of a lot of strength as well. So, and it, and it doesn't beat you up. I mean, I've, over the years, I've competed in master's competition. Master's competition is is um, competition in older age groups. It starts at 20 to 24. And literally every year in the national world championships, there are many people competing in the 80 to 84, 95 to 99, 100 to 104 age group, seriously. So it's something you can do all your life. 
I swim outdoors. I get lots of vitamin D. You know, it's healthy. Um, and, you know, I think it's it's also one of those things that it's it challenges you mentally, you know, I, and w- whether it's swimming, running, lifting weights, stretch cords, walking around the block. I think if you get into a habit of doing things, it not only helps you physically, but it's 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 good for your mind and your emotional stability and all that. So it's a holistic benefit. Bill, I think I could just listen to you talk all day long and uh, it would just be fantastic for me. <laughs> um, I have a question for you. You have been a part of groundbreaking bits of technology over the past couple of decades, right? So for you, what is the one that you are most proud of? Hmm. Boy, that's a really good question. Um, you know, ultimately, I, I think it was my first venture that I'm the most proud of. It was uh, a swim watch. I mean, I was, I had just sold my first company and, um, you know, selling a company is, is a really good thing. Uh, but it's also a hard thing to go through. I mean, you know, one day you are God and the next day, you know, you're just one of several evangelists, you know, somebody else is playing that role. And, and I I mean, it's, it, it it was an adjustment for me. I was immature, I I think. So um, that's when I jumped back into the pool uh, just to sort of relieve the stress and, kind of go back to something was familiar and I was good at. And that's actually where the idea of a watch that tracked performance hit me. In fact, I remember it was, it was on Halloween, October 31st of 1994. I was walking through this health club and to get to the outdoor pool, you had to walk past the exercise room where they had stairmasters and treadmills and all that stuff. And all of them had blinking lights telling you how fast you went, how far you went, how many calories you burned. And that's when the idea hit me, man, wouldn't that be great for swimming? You know, something that sort of quantified your performance in the water. And so I spent a year just, I had no idea how to do any of this stuff spent over a year just pure research and ultimately pulled it off with a global distribution deal for the Speedo brand. And I look back on that, it it was a, a really important event in my life. And it, it actually was responsible for everything I did for the next 30 odd years. Bill, how have you maintained a healthy mindset with your body and mind over the years? And do you have any advice for other guys that are right now going through midlife? You know, we all get into ruts from time to time, and I'm no different. I, I you know, things get to you, you know, uh, life sometimes gets in the way. And you go through emotional highs and lows. Um. I found having fitness goals and career goals and social goals, kind of a a three prong, think of them as the three legs of a chair, a three legged stool. It's not gonna stand up long just with one or two of them. You need sort of a a, a holistic approach in your life and, and you really have to work at all three of those. And over time, I think what by just focusing on making that progress, all of a sudden you wake up one day and say, man, I feel good about myself. I feel good about things. I got a positive attitude on life. Um, things are good. That'd be my advice. It Bill, works for me. That's, that's that, what that I was, say. That was phenomenal. I love, I love the chair analogy. 
obviously people can email Rubio at the Rubio method.com. If they have some questions for you, what's, what's next, what's going on with Bill Geyser right now? How can people connect with you? What can they find out more information about you? What, what are you, what are, what are you selling right now? What do you got? Well, so probably the, the best place to reach me is on Twitter. Um, I'm at Bill G on Twitter. I, I got on Twitter really, really early, like months after they started it. I, I, I think I, I, there was an article, you know, written by some academic pointy head person decades ago about how Twitter spread. And when I read that article, I realized I was in the first couple of hundred people to join I think it was the first Twitter user in Dallas, and uh, and I've used it extensively to follow topics I care about and form relationships with people. And Rubio, that goes back to you know when I first talked to you about it. Uh, right. I, I thought it was probably something that uh, you could capitalize on, and you have so far eclipsed. Anything I've done on Twitter, you're you're like um, you're the Yoda, you're Yoda of Twitter. That's so I'd say well, well, thank you, that's thank it. You. And and I've got a couple of projects too. I can't really go into any detail now, but I I do have some exciting uh, projects that are getting ready to start that involve uh, brand name consumer appliances that are going to be connected and smart and do all sorts of really interesting, beneficial things. Bill, this was absolutely fantastic. We really appreciate you opening up your afternoon with us. You were absolutely, you, I, I was expecting a lot and you over delivered, which that doesn't happen often. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. That was Bill Geyser. Bit, bit key. Brain. Military families often sacrifice precious time away from loved ones while serving our country. We were worried that with him leaving, that she would lose those connections with her dad. Some of life's best moments happen between parents, children, and the pages of a good book. United Through Reading provides that connection. And now, United Through Reading is also available to veterans. Learn more about United Through Reading at unitedthroughreading.org. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. Focus, focus up, what's going on? Welcome back to the Rubio Method. Remember, you can share the episodes and of course subscribe at Spotify, Amazon, Google, YouTube, and of course, NGBN.TV. Have any questions for us about food? A lot of you ask about food and accents, about men's mental health, whatever you want, just Rubio at the Rubio Method.com. Keep them coming. Monahan, you know I loved Bill Geyser interview. That guy is so smart, like we were just saying off camera, so smart, but just so laid back. What, what, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I feel like he was so smart, but so laid back that he made us feel smart. It was just, and then the fact that he said he's going to make, uh, well, I mean, shoot, he even said it, he's going to make uh, washers and dryers or appliances smart. So <laughs> he was a great guy. Yes, he was. So I am very excited for everyone to see that interview and share it. Let's get to the bottom line segment. Remember, the bottom line is stuff that you probably learned along the way, but didn't even realize that you learned it. Number one, there are winners and losers in life. All right. Bill Geyser, perfect example where he could have had that one moment of just, oh, my gosh, I've been working all this time for this since the 90s. And boom, this bigger shark comes and grabs it. What am I going to do? But he kind of just well, let's go. There's other things to invent, you know, and that. So number one, there are winners and losers in life. Number two, take charge of your mind and body. Bill said this a lot with his swimming. Monahan, haven't you said something along these lines as well? That physicalness, being a little bit more physical, helps out the mind. 
Yeah, it produces those endorphins that really makes you feel better about yourself. And if you're like gaining or losing weight and gaining muscle, like you look better. So all that confidence just ties together. And your third bottom line, there is always, always hope and a way. MetaWatch proved that, Bill Geiser proved that, and Monahan was, we were talking about that with the Monahan Minute with the suicide hotline. Just when you think, even if you're starting to go down that path of, ah, I'm not too sure about what's happening right now, like Monahan said, it's one of those, let's call, let's get it off our chest, let's kind of help each other out here. Monahan, what's that number one more time? Yeah, so that number is 1 800, I'm going to pull it up here, uh, 273 8255. Fantastic. Do not wait. Make sure you are talking to someone, whether it's on the phone, a buddy, a wife, a friend, whatever you got. Just make sure you communicate. My hand, we did it. Episode 10. That is a wrap. I think everyone's going to love it. I know they're going to love it. All right. Big T, let it rain.